I want to share a story with you guys about uh, a cousin of mine who is now dead. He was murdered back in the early 90s. Um, and I recently found out through my mom that I guess it was recently the anniversary of his death, which you know, got to be about 15 years by now. But every time I think of him, I think of the only memory I have of him. Now, I have three memories involving him. One of them was of uh, him in the hospital right before he died, in a coma, face all black and blue, just a mess. Uh, the second one is at his funeral, and I'll get into these then, but the one I want to focus on right now is is uh, the only memory I have of him when he was alive. Now, let me set the stage here. It's summertime, early 90s. Um, I was, I think I was 12 at the time, and he was about a decade older than me, maybe a little more, so he would have been about 22, 24, right in that area. So we're in my parents' car, they had a station wagon at the time, and I don't know why he was there, I think my dad was helping him move something. Uh, so my parents are in the front seat, he's in the, in the back seat, and I'm in the back area, but I'm leaning against the back seat, so I'm like, I'm right up near the back seat. And also in the back with me were another cousin of mine who was my age, and my brother who was a couple years younger, or a couple years older than me. So you know, three kids hanging out in the back area. Now I was, like I said, I was towards the front, leaning against the back seat, and they were towards the back window. They got the idea at some point to start crumpling up paper and throwing it at the back of my cousin's head, and he lets it go once or twice, and. Finally, and he knows who's doing it. I mean, it's obvious that I'm right there behind him, or off to the side behind him, and that they're in the back. So, he, I mean, he knows what's going on. But, you know, he decides that, like, the third or fourth paper ball hits him, and he spins around and grabs my arm and squeezes the hell out of it, and he points his finger at me, and he's like, I better not get hit with anything else. Or, like, really mean. And, and squeeze the hell out of my arm. I mean, that shit hurt. And here I am, you know, a little skinny 12-year-old kid. What the hell am I going to do? I, and it was the situation, it was a kind of situation where I was always a skinny kid, like a little little skinny kid. So it's like my dad would have went one of two ways. Either he would have been overprotective or he would have went the opposite route and been like, you know, i got to toughen this kid up because he's smaller than everyone else. Well, he went that route. So, you know, normally people would tell their dad and their dad would do something about it, but I couldn't, you know, I would have been called a pussy or something if I'd have told my dad, oh, this man's picking on me. <laughs> Shut up, you little pussy. So, you know, I'd never told my dad, but man, that, he squeezed the hell out of my arm. And, and see, the, the thing is, every time I think about him, that's what I remember about him, is him picking on a little, a little kid, you know? Now, I believe it was later on that summer when he was murdered, and this, th th that story is like, uh, he was involved in some kind of a love triangle. You know, he was just, he was a mess of a human being. Always, you know, he was like an alcoholic, always out getting into trouble and whatnot. And he was involved in some kind of a love triangle at some point uh, during uh, like a weekend night. He gets drunk shows up on this guy's doorstep, forces his way in the house. I guess that's where his, you know, that, that girl was, who was, you know, caught in between these two guys. Forces his way in the house, and he ends up getting beat over the head with a guitar, and goes into a coma for a few days, a week or two, and, and dies. So that's the story there. Um, and the guy got off because, you know, look, some drunk asshole's breaking into his house, and he defends himself. Hey, you know, <laughs> so he got he got off on that. But uh, so I'm at the at the funeral now. The last memory of him. I'm at the funeral, and I did not want to be there. I did not care to be there. What am I like? Am I really supposed to pretend that I liked this guy? Am I supposed to pretend that I'm sad that some asshole died? You know, if, maybe if he wasn't such an asshole, he would still be alive. You know, but, you know, i got to go there. I have to suffer through this. I have to suffer through this funeral watching all of these people pretend like he was supposed to be a good guy or something. Like, oh, he's in heaven now. <laughs> so I'm at the funeral. And uh, 
we're all sitting there, and my sister had this picture book. Uh, she, you know, she was a few years younger than me. She brought along like a little picture book to look at. Um, so she's looking through this book, and at some point I got a hold of it, and I'm, now I'm looking through this book, and we're all sitting there, and I saw something funny. And, and bear in mind, bear in mind, I, I wasn't sad, you know. The whole event just ruined my day. So what do I want to go to a funeral for an idiot? I don't want to go to a funeral anyway, but especially a funeral of someone I didn't like, someone who was a complete idiot in life, but we're supposed to go mourn their death. We, you know, we should be celebrating that they're dead, not mourning their death. So I'm bummed out that I'm there, and, you know, I'm looking through this picture book, and I'm, I saw something that funny, and, and, you know, laughing is an involuntary response. I can't hold back a laugh, you know. I saw something funny and I started laughing, like out loud, you know, big gut, horror, horror, big gut laugh. And so I'm there laughing and I get this, oh, the back of my head. I turned around in time to see my dad's arm coming back and a sea of faces staring at me indignantly, like, how could you laugh? I'm like, D did you people even know this guy? Did you know this guy? You're all sad that some idiot was killed because he was an idiot. But anyway, that, that is the last funeral I ever went to for someone I didn't like. Ever since then. I've had family members die since then who I didn't like. And I, I've had family members die since then who I did like and I loved. And I went to their funerals and even gave eulogy once. But... I'm not going to a funeral for someone who was an asshole. Sorry. I don't care if I was related to him or not. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to share that memory. Because every time I think of him, that's the memory that pops into my head. Because that's the only memory I have of him. Is of him getting tough with a little skinny 12-year-old kid. You know, it just made me think. I wanted to share it with you. You know, it just made me think. How do I want to be remembered, you know? Because I couldn't imagine, like I have a couple little nieces, and I couldn't imagine, what if I died in a week or two, and like their last memory of me would be of me like pushing one of them over, you know, doing something mean to one of them. Like, you know, I don't know, it just made me think. I just wanted to share that story, you know. How do you want to be remembered?